Hey besties, Angeline here and welcome to my home studio where we do all things printing. Today, we're designing and making a sticker sheet using Canva. Canva is an online design platform and I like it because it has an endless library of templates and themes that you can choose from to create your own products. All right, let's start designing. Here we are in Canva. The theme I'm going with is a charcuterie board. I've already set my canvas to be five and a half by four inches. For the background, I'm going with a charcuterie board shape. Now, the fun part, adding all the sticker elements. I'm pulling in watercolor style cheeses. Let's get some salami. Canva has so many options for images and there is even an AI tool called Magic Recommendations that recommends specific images that are similar in style to ones that you've chosen. That's why everything I have on here kind of has the same aesthetic. This makes it so much easier to design because it makes everything look cohesive without you having to dig through so many different graphics. I added a monogram for that artisan vibe. Since this is a sticker sheet, I'm making sure there's enough space between each element for clean cuts. I'm going to add an outline to all these elements by going into edit, shadow, outline, and we'll increase the size and make the color a nice beige. All the outline sizes are going to be 100 to keep it simple. I'll do the same outline treatment to all of these food elements. I haven't found a faster way to do this and I tried selecting them all at once to make my outline but it looks like I need to do the outline effects individually. It does take some time but trust me it'll be all worth it. Once I'm happy with the layout I export it as an SVG with a transparent background and open up that downloaded file into Adobe Illustrator. I only want to focus on the food elements because I want them individual stickers I'll select them and copy them onto a separate layer. We'll go into the layers panel on the right and then click this plus icon to add the second layer. Paste in place duplicates it exactly in the same spot. This duplicate layer is what we'll use to create our cut line layer. I'll turn off the visibility of the original layer so we can focus better. Select all of our elements. On top, we'll go into object, rasterize, and make this grayscale. Up here at image trace, we'll try tracing in three colors. This tool chooses the three most dominant colors to vectorize. So it is gonna come out kind of funky, but that won't be an issue. Click expand and that got the outlines traced. So we're all good with that. I'll delete everything that I don't want. I only want the outermost line of each of our snacks here. This feels like it could take forever. So instead I'll directly click each outer line that I want and I'll assign the cut contour swatch to it. Copy only those contour lines and delete everything else and paste in place. Now we can turn our original layer back on. I'm adding a bleed for all these elements. I'm not going to go into detail, but if you want to go more in depth with how to do this, see my video on adding bleed, which I'll link for easy access. I do have a whole library on more videos for print and cut projects on the BN20 series printers. Originally, I was going to have this cut out as a square, but I figure why not be fancy and cut the shape of the board out. So I brought my text in closer and then, using some simple rectangular shapes with rounded corners and a circle, I merged them together with Pathfinder and smoothed out any round corners. We already have this as cyan, which is our perf cut contour. Perf cut will cut the entire shape through, including the backing. For some finishing touches, I'm going to turn the background into a beige as well. I want to give it a warmer feel, so I don't want to have it stark white. And I'll save this PDF and drop that file into VersaWorks. Let's go into settings. To maximize the space, I'll edit the size so we can fit three of these across. And I can do this because this isn't for a client or anything, it's just for fun. You don't want to alter your customer's file sizes if you aren't supposed to. For the sake of being efficient with our material, I'll shrink them just enough and create six copies for now. I'll print high quality and keep unidirection for the best output. Let's do a quick cut test, which you can configure in the BN Utility. That way we can get the settings right without cutting a bunch of stickers that we can't even peel. Grab my weeding tool to see how this turned out. It's not bad, but I'll make the force 5 GF less. And here's a pro tip to save your blades. Don't cut deeper than you need to. In cut controls, we can change the perf cut settings. 
This is what I generally use, but of course this changes from time to time depending on different factors. And I do have another video that goes in depth with that, which I will link as well. All right, everything looks good. Let's send it to print on the VN2. The printable vinyl I'm using is GCVP or Glossy Calendared Vinyl from Roland, which you can get in their online store. First, the machine prints in full color onto the vinyl, and when that's completed, it rolls back up to contour cut the areas we assigned an illustrator, which is cutting around each of the food pieces. And then finally, it will perf cut or die cut the full shape out, which is going to be the whole board. The print and cut machine knows what to do because we assign those specific line colors and the program reads them, whether it's cut contour or perf cut. It's all done, and here's the fun part, popping them out. Here's a look at our custom charcuterie board sticker sheet designed in Canva and printed and cut on the BN220A. Besties, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Hopefully you get a chance to utilize Canva to create your own sticker sheets. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check the description below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.